Good evening, Australia. It's great to be here. Hope you're ready, because it's time to rock. Well, not that sort of rock. What you're looking at is the construction of a most unusual rock garden. It's a garden inspired by the geology of Victoria, featuring a brilliant arrangement of nearly 500 rock specimens collected from every corner of the state, making this living geological map at Monash University's Clayton campus the largest outdoor earth sciences laboratory in the world. James, this is really a most remarkable garden. How did it all come about? Well, a couple of years ago, the Dean of Science here at Monash University decided that he wanted to bring new concepts um, into teaching uh, science here at the university and said, uh, we want to build an outdoor teaching laboratory so our students can start working on it. Rather than go out in the field, they can just come here and get an idea and appreciation of what we're doing as geologists. So, James, how is the garden laid out? Well, it's inspired by the geology of Victoria. And we've got about 500 different rocks here, weighing up to 13 tonnes each. And they represent about 13 different areas here in Victoria. Some of the rocks here weigh about 13 or 14 tonnes, so we had to get cranes to bring them in. Um, from right at the beginning of the construction period until we were actually able to open the garden to the public and to our students, it took around about a year, which meant that myself and uh, my colleagues who were working on the garden had to be down here literally every day during that whole process just to make sure that every one of the rocks with its own orientation and its own position in the garden, every one of those 500 rocks had to be put into the right place. Now, Julie, you're a volcanologist here at the university. Yep. And it's really important, isn't it, the material that comes out of the volcano is what gives us the sorts of soils we grow our plants in. Yeah, that's right. So the soil composition is very much dependent on the breakdown of these rocks. So these are both volcanic rocks from Western Victoria. This one's a basalt and this one's a scoria. This is the sort of material I use for scoria paths yeah. and occasionally so, as a mulch. Yeah, so because it's got lots of bubbles in it, it's very yeah. porous, so the water just comes right through it. But also, this one's made mainly of glass, so it doesn't have a lot of crystals in it. And volcanic glass breaks down really, really quickly. And this stuff's made mainly of crystals, and that's very hardy. It takes a long time to break down, so we get very thin soils on this stuff. Yeah. Maybe thick soils on this stuff, so up to three metres of profile sometimes, on a scoria cone, which is a, a, a big edifice. And it breaks down to clays, which is what you can see here. And because this is volcanic and because it's been brought up from below the Earth's crust, do I take it that it is rich in minerals? It's very rich in minerals. So this has a red colour because it has a lot of iron content in it. And that iron is really useful for plants because it allows it to make chlorophyll. And they also have a lot of potassium in them and calcium. And those are the things that plants need to grow. Now, I notice you've got a whole lot of planting coming through here. Yes. And I know from my own experience of being in the bush yes. that different plants grow with different geologies. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. is there a way in which planting here reflects the geology they're growing on? Absolutely. So, the plantings are actually very sympathetic to what we would find those geographical areas. We actually use plants actually in some very unique ways. For instance, we think we've got an area where we might find gold. We actually look at the leaves of some plants, and if you micro-analyze those and see little bits of gold in there, um, you can actually say, well, obviously that gold's been incorporating the root system of that plant, so there must be gold in the rocks beneath. So we use that as an exploration tool for mining. So is this something I can do at home? Or um, you'd have to probably get a few scientists to come in to do some um, some detailed uh, scientific work on those plants. So it's but, uh, not likely to be a way I can make myself a fortune. Unfortunately not, what no. Blow. What a blow. <laughs> Gardens have experienced a considerable resurgence as a teaching tool over the last decade or so. But as far as I know, this is the first one to combine geology with modern ecology. It's a fascinating site, particularly for people who like plants or geology. There's a lot to learn and a lot of information. It's open to the public, so why not rock on down and check it out? <laughs> <laughs>